next speaker uh, would be Dr. Matteo Bertini, and he's going to present from Netherlands, and he's going to present the uh, report on the impact of clinical and echocardiographic response to cardiac resynchronization therapy on long-term survival. So again, uh, coming back to widely used technology, widely used device, which is resynchronization, but we need to learn more and understand more in this, uh, uh, using this technology. Dr. Bertini. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure for me to be here. I have uh, no conflict of interest to declare. <clears throat> the topic of uh, my study is about a very advanced heart failure patient that are patient with uh, desynchronous failing heart. That means that uh, they have very dilated left ventricle with a desynchronous contraction that can be uh, present at three levels, essentially, in the, between the atria and the ventricle. So we have atrioventricular desynchrony. Between the right and the left ventricle, we have the interventricular desynchrony. And within the left ventricle, and we have the intra-left ventricular desynchrony. Uh, this patient can be treated with cardiac resynchronization therapy, that is an electrical therapy based uh, on the placement of three catheters, uh, the first one in the right atrium, the second one in the right ventricle, and the third one through the coronary sinus in the epicardial surface of the left ventricle. This therapy can uh, improve the synchrony at uh, three levels and uh, can uh, partially reverse uh, the uh, re adverse remodeling in this patient, and in particular can partially restore a more physiological contraction in these ventricles. Several clinical studies uh, was performed to validate this therapy, and uh, uh, they use uh, clinical and echocardiographic endpoints. However, uh, thus far it remains unclear whether clinical or echocardiographic midterm response to cardiac resynchronization therapy have an influence on long-term prognosis of this patient. Therefore, the aim of the study was to establish which definition of cardiac resynchronization therapy response at midterm follow-up, and I mean uh, after six months of the implantation, best predicts long-term prognosis. And specifically, we tested the clinical improvement, so improvement in clinical status, and the echocardiographic improvement, that means uh, a significant reduction of left ventricular volumes. Uh, 663 patients uh, with our failure were enrolled and got CRT, and mean age of the study population was 65 years, and 79% of the patients were male. After six months of CRT, 77% of the patients show a good clinical response, and 62% uh, of the patients show a good echocardiographic response, so show a good uh, 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 remodeling of the left ventricle, so a reduction, significant reduction in particular of left ventricular and systolic volume. The mean follow-up of the study was about three years and a half. The main result regards the uh, identification of the predictors of all-cause mortality in this population. And uh, uh, specifically, we found that the well-established prognosticator of a failure were predictor of all-cause mortality also in this patient, like the presence of diabetes, having a low systolic blood pressure, having a worse renal function, and also hospitalization for a failure within the first six months follow-up predicted um, a bad prognosis in this patient. Then, when we tested the clinical and echocardiographic response together with these uh, well-established prognosticators, we found that only echocardiographic response was independently related to all-cause mortality. And in particular, in this picture, we can see the uh, survival curve uh, of the population dichotomized based on the echocardiographic response. And specifically, we have uh, the follow-up in the x-axis and the, uh, the cumulative survival in the y-axis. And we have two lines. The orange line uh, represents the patient who have a good response uh, in terms of uh, left ventricular remodeling, uh, in terms of uh, reduction of left ventricular volumes, and the yellow line represents the echocardiographic non-responder patient. And as we can see, the patient in the orange line had a better survival than the patient in the yellow line. And in particular, a patient treated with CRT who did not show a good echocardiographic response after six months had a risk of death three times higher than a patient showing a good response during the next three years of follow-up. 
So in conclusion, we can say that echocardiographic response is a better predictor of long-term survival than clinical response, and therefore echocardiographic response may be an adequate surrogate endpoint to define a good um, response to cardiac resynchronization therapy. The next step in the using of echo in the CRT is uh, to uh, help uh, a better selection of uh, cardiac resynchronization therapy recipients in order to improve the response to this therapy, to reduce the risk related to the procedure that is a complex procedure, and uh, to save money uh, because we can avoid to implant patients uh, with a very low probability of a good response on long-term follow-up. Thank you very much for the attention. Thank you very much for this elegant uh, overview. Again, for those uh, who are going to uh, listen to the details, this is going to be also presented at this meeting. Uh, just a few uh, comments. Uh, as you know very well, cardiac resynchronization therapy is now becoming one of the most important part of the uh, comprehensive management of our heart failure patients. Obviously, this is restricted for special subgroup of patients. Uh, however, still underused across Europe, we estimate that uh, much less than 20% who are uh, eligible for such therapy are using this therapy uh, across our continent. Obviously, it varies across country to country. Uh, however, we need to identify those who would respond, and we definitely need to understand more, uh, and then perhaps those who did not respond to this therapy uh, are candidates for uh, mitral clipping. Uh, very, very intriguing study, open for the discussion. Okay. Well, if there are no questions, I have one. The holy grail is to identify the patient who would respond. Yeah seeing after when the implant is in, that he doesn't respond, that's helpful. We know that. We've seen that in other studies too. Made at CRT has shown the same thing. Dave Solomon presented that just a couple of, time, a couple of times um, already. Um, but how can we improve the predictive value of ECHO uh, to, to identify those who would respond and who would not so we save money and identify the patient who would benefit this save is him in an unnecessary procedure. This is a very good point. I think that uh, uh, we have not to focus only on one parameter, for instance, the synchrony, but with the echo we have to uh, try to understand the substrate that we can uh, uh, resynchronize. And specifically, we, uh, we need to evaluate uh, uh, the desynchrony, we need to evaluate the viability, and uh, also we need to evaluate where we can suggest to place the left ventricular lead uh, in, by uh, in the individuation of the most delayed set of the most delayed segment, for instance. And therefore, uh, I think that uh, we don't uh, the echo should not be used only to get one information, but the echo should be more comprehensive and give to uh, the implanter uh, lots of information to help also uh, during the implantation. Okay, thank you very much. If there are no questions, uh, no comments, uh, I'm sure that you are going to have the presenter afterwards to discuss the details of his uh, study and also his view on this uh, intriguing and uh, more widely uh, available therapy across our continent. Thank you. Well, we move on with the third talk. And um, in heart failure, as in cardiology, we have to think outside of the box. Really, we have to, when we want to come up with some new strategies, some crazy people have to come up with some crazy ideas. They sometimes work, they sometimes don't. The pioneers like Angelo, they put another lead uh, in the coronary sinus, then there to a postal lateral lateral vein, and 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 try.